Pocket Sand is a completely fair and legal way to fight. However, there's no Pocket Sand in Elden Ring, so we'll just have to settle with something else. That's right, Pocket, pocket rocks, rocks, also known as Bestial Sling. Way harder, way cooler, and way rockier. For the character, I made a frog, I think. Either one works for me. I'm not really sure where I was trying to go with this, but here it is. And honestly, it's just as terrible as I thought it would be as I was making it, so you're welcome for blessing your eyes with this truly marvelous sight. In order to get Bestial Sling, we need to feed the Beast Priest some weeds so that he thanks us for feeding him for the first time in 200 years by giving us the incantation. Bestial Sling is surprisingly, you guessed it, a Bestial Incantation. Go figure. No idea how that's possible, but that means it gets boosted in damage by certain weapons. One of these weapons is the Cinderella Ella Umbrella Dagger. Even though you can't equip the incantation onto the dagger, just having the dagger will boost our damage by 10%. It's at the bottom of the American Ninja Warrior course, below the Bestial Sanctum, so we have to sign up and prove our parkour skills in order to get it. But once we get it, we can just keep it in our offhand to always have a damage boost at all times. Death Root number 1 is the next thing we need to get, because Garonk requires 2 weeds in order to give us the incantation. Luckily for us though, is that the first Death Root we give him, will reward us with the Claw Mark Seal, which also increases our power of Bestial Incantations by 10% as well. So that's pretty cool if I do say so myself. Since we just started, we don't really have anything, so we just spam fire at the boat guy number 1 until we run out of spunk. After that, we just keep poking him with our spear over and over again, since we don't really have anything else, until he just gives us the death root that we need. But since I'm completely oblivious, I get blindsided by Skeletor out of nowhere, and pray to the lord that the boatman gives me death root before I respawn. There's seven other death roots in the game, but they all seem way too annoying to get this early, so I'll go for the easiest one. The next death root I go for is in the death touched catacombs, so I need to speedrun the super complex puzzle of walking through hallways with level negative one enemies until I pull a lever to open the door. Since they're such low IQ, their reflexes are awful and I break their ankles every single time. After that though, there's a named enemy here guarding the death root, so I have to pull out the super hot fire in order to beat him, which every time it hits them, they act like it's hot fire and try to put it out instead of just absorbing it like a normal person. And then I get the death root from the chest afterwards to feed to Gronk. Garonk eats both the weeds and spits out the claw mark seal and the bestial sling incantation for us. We gladly accept the saliva covered items and immediately equip them so we can get started on the run finally. I had no idea what talisman to use at the start, but when I was reading the wiki for the next run, the wiki said that the arrow's reach talisman increases the range of the incantation, so I decided to go get that one first. Unfortunately, I am the big dumb, and apparently I got trolled and it doesn't actually increase the range I guess. But I didn't find this out until after the run, so jokes on me, I'm illiterate, and whoever wrote the wiki got me with the old classic Rickroll. Also, these guys put the double dragon whoop on me, which is not very cool of them, but it is what it is. I went to go get some upgrades for the sill, because honestly, this incantation is terrible. But while I was doing that, I experienced this bloodstain, doing typical bloodstain things, while exploring these caves looking for... I went down a tiny little corridor, and it was a terrible mistake because when I turned around, the entire block of goons had gathered and proceeded to just roll and gank me in the streets of Limgrave. After I upgraded my Sacred Seal, I went to go upgrade my Flask with more uses and more healing. However, I didn't want to fight the Knight's Calvary, and apparently that just destroyed their confidence, because they kind of just died all of a sudden. I have no idea how, but it sounds to me like they encountered what is known as a skill issue, and they should get good, because that was just embarrassing for them. And as for me, that was a massive showcase of skillful fighting, and should be put up in a memorial or hall of fame. The Sacred Seal scales with Strength and Faith, so I went and got the Strength Crystal tier, but not the Faith one, because I don't remember. I refused to look up where the Faith tier is actually located, because I had some religion joke I planned, but I forgot what the joke was when I started writing the script for the video, so you'll just have to settle with the excuse that I had a brain aneurysm and was incapacitated in a mental facility instead. But now that we have this, we can finally actually play the game. The incantation works like a shotgun, not like an MW2 pre-patch model 1887 shotgun. It's more like a double A12 shotgun with negative range. If you're not right up in the enemy's face, then you tickle them with hardly any damage, and even if you get up in their faces, it still hits like a wet noodle. The only good thing about the incantation is that the recovery time after throwing the pocket rocks is super fast so I can roll away before I get hit. The biggest problem with the incantation is the fact that you can only get a few hits in here and there, and that's really bad because I'm a greedy little goblin so I always attack way more than I should, which results in a lot of deaths because for every attack I have to decide whether I can do one, two, or three attacks on them. 
If I make a mistake with counting because numbers are super hard for me, I get rolled into a fat doobie, lit up, and smoked instantly. It took a lot of getting used to, you know, having to actually play the game strategically for once, which is a completely foreign concept to me. But it's also Margit, so it's not too difficult for a normal human being, but I'm far from that, so it was pretty hard. Once I beat Margit, I got my second talisman slot, and after seeing the disaster of damage I was doing, I went to the sepia-toned crystal tunnels for the faith talisman, and the aliens from Men in Black had different ideas for me, which just really made me cry because they cancelled my entire momentum somehow after hitting me and just cucked me. After my recent cuck though from the aliens, I made it through and I got the faith talisman, but then I got cucked by them again, so at this point I'm ready to just give up. Since I have my brand new 4% faith talisman, I'm fully equipped to throw rocks at Godric's eyes a little bit harder, but not too hard since I don't want to damage his beautiful majestic eyes too much. I also found out that Godric dislikes rocks because every time I hit them with him, he does his airbender wind attack which sometimes I can dodge, but usually I get hit one time and then I repeat the process. Sometimes he would do a different attack, but most of the time it was a wind blow attack, and he loves trying to blow me, but I told him no thanks, put it on my tab for next time brother, and I moved on. In the second phase, he mostly does the same thing, except now he's red, so it's a completely different fight. I'm much more tempted to be blown now due to his vast changes, but I still have to refuse. Also, when he's twirling like a fancy ballerina, he karate chops the rock back at me, so I just have to wait until he's done rolling around. At this point, I decide that the arrow's reach talisman was completely trash, especially because it doesn't actually do anything, so I needed to replace it with a new one. However, in the process, I was completely and fairly defeating Niall with absolutely no sources other than the rocks as you can clearly see from the gameplay. But I looked away to see if I was even recording for one second, and I guess these ghosts had eSport comms because they called out to each other exactly when to attack in order to double hit me like they were black op zombies and I had no jug. This time I was actually paying attention and I lured him over to the Disneyland geysers so that it bursted right up into his gooch and it caused internal rupturing of his organs. All this just so I can get the needle to lower Millicent's shield so I can murder her. Unfortunately, even though she has one arm, she still whooped on me, which might be the most embarrassing thing I've ever seen because typically I'm used to interacting with gimps, but this one is quite literally a gimp, so I'm more than confused, I'm intrigued. After I beat her, I go back to Goober Boy here, and since he's crying like a little sissy baby boy that just lost his favorite binky, I throw a rock and he dies so that I take his talisman for 8% more damage, which hardly does anything for me, but it's probably the best talisman for me right now, so I'll get it. Moving back to the actual meat of the run, it's actually embarrassing how bad I did at this fight. Watching this, it looks like it's my first time ever fighting Red Wolf, and like a German camp theme park, my brain was completely fried. So I was fighting for my life against an unnamed generic enemy with an on-screen health bar for absolutely no reason. Right after Red Wolf, I went around this building to get the Ragu icon in order to throw my rocks out faster, because if I can't hit hard, then I might as well hit faster. This was purely to make up for the lack of damage with speed, so my DPS numbers will still look better when I get scouted in Elden Ring Esports and I remove my 4% damage talisman in order to be faster because of some mathematical equation that I made up right on the spot and I just decided to go with. But then I die to some random wizards and my chances of signing to an esports team are destroyed faster than my will to live. Sadly though, I must continue on to Renala and throw some rocks at orphans on the ground to feel better about myself and these little gremlins were not having any of that because they were playing extreme hide and seek with me the entire time. I could not for the life of me find the glowing little cuck very fast, which meant they kept throwing pots at me like angry little toddlers. I also had to make sure that I only hit them once so that I didn't use up all of my FP before I actually got to fight Renala, but once I got to her, I ran up next to her to trick her into throwing her staff at me, which made her completely useless for like 5 seconds while she waited for her boomerang she bought online for $2 to return to her. And she kind of just kept trying to act like she was a melee boss rather than a magic boss because of this. The only time I got slept on was when she started to summon stuff, but even then I just ran around them, broke their ankles, hit the gritty, and then hit a three-pointer right in Renala's head. We now have two great runes, which means we can go talk to the old decrepit lady that's about to wither away at any moment. But now we can re-equip the 4% damage talisman so we can do 5 more damage, which will make no difference at all. While I was getting stones to hammer into my sacred seal to somehow make it stronger, I decided to just go completely through the ruins here to get to the Atlas Platinum because I usually just ride the elevator like a lazy fat lard, but I decided to get some exercise climbing up there instead, which was quite a nice change from spamming the skip button for the elevator cutscene 80 times in every single playthrough. 
But before I get to the platinum yellow lands, I have to throw rocks at an overgrown lizard, which wasn't too bad at all, because most of his attacks are slow and he gets stuck on the arena constantly, which allows me to just pelt him with a massively dubious amount of stones. It's also nice because he has a lock on specifically for his head, so I can just melt his health bar whenever he shoves his ugly mug near me. The incantation also has pretty high poise damage, so if I'm able to spam attack him, he'll bend the knee and cry pretty quickly so we can roast him. Even though we have access to the Atlas Platypus, I forgot to go beat Radon, so I go back and feed stones to his horse since he can't digest them. And as long as I keep shoving rocks down his throat, then the fight is pretty simple. Most of the fight is holding onto Radon like I'm on the back of a metaphorical motorcycle, except this Iron Stallion is a crippled horse with sticks for legs, and the weight of my body is enough to crush them. Whenever he starts to show that he's about to have a bowel movement and launch towards me, I get closer to him to dodge most of his attacks, because he's unable to hit directly in front of him unless he uses a very specific certain attack. But he basically only uses this attack once per phase, and as long as I dodge it, I can just keep camping his legs for the rest of the fight. When he hits the second phase, it's basically the same strategy, except now he's crunk on that purple lean supreme meme drink machine. It doesn't really make much of a difference other than a few extra attacks, but they aren't too bad to dodge. Afterwards, I tried to go into the capital, but the tree sentinel sent me the shadow realm, because I honestly don't understand how he can slam the hammer down faster than a senior citizen falling down a flight of stairs, but he absolutely destroyed me with his speed. I had to make sure to time my attacks so that I didn't get caught in an animation because otherwise it was a graveyard for me and I have no cards to draw from. Once he hit his red lightning phase, every time he summoned lightning spots everywhere, I was able to close the distance and toss some pop rocks in his direction. This fight was pretty dangerous because I had to be super close to him for full damage, but getting too close to him led to him baby raging and slamming his hammer down instantly. Speaking of baby rage, Godfrey is the prime suspect because believe it or not, I actually beat him first try. I was actually doing really well during this fight, until the point where I wasn't anymore. But for the most part, when he tried to slam his axe down on me, I was able to dodge it and put two into his skull for good measure. Any more than that and I would need medical attention, because he would hit me with the meanest beatdown since the infamous show Bully Beatdown. And Godfrey would for sure be the type of bully to go onto live television and admit to the world that they are in fact a bully. And once they got the beat down, they would double down and say they were going to bully even more after they got embarrassed in front of everyone on TV. At least that's what I think would happen, but since he's now dead two times over, I'll never know the answer to this hypothetical. And since we beat him, we can get our final talisman. And the best talisman for me is the green dog talisman, because throwing these rocks is super tiring and I run out of stamina very quick. And taking a break next to these dogs is a quite nice break from all the wacky gremlins that have been trying to murder me recently. So huffing the fumes of a green dog stone will make me feel like I'm hopped up on crack and I can recharge my stamina faster. For the totally not Margit fight, I had to get close to him in order to get the full effect of the incantation, which would typically be a bad thing since he attacks like a rabid dog. But as long as I baited him to do his yellow hammer attack, I could hit him once so that he immediately does a twirl like his name was Earl, dodge it with ease, and get a bunch of hits in. I also made sure to dodge with him when he lunged across the arena because it usually meant he would do his twirl attack again so I could get even more hits on him. Once he hit second phase, I just repeated the same things as the first phase except now he would do his red blood attack which was the worst thing he could do because he shows it off for 10 seconds before he actually does it giving me plenty of time to get near him and dodge it, allowing for maximum damage. This fight wasn't actually too bad once I got the hang of my attack openings, but before that I got destroyed by him for about 40 minutes, because again, I'm a greedy little gremlin that never learns to hold back. The magical lady on a horse that can be manipulated into becoming a melee boss gave me a little bit more trouble, because you can just kind of run up near her and trick her into attacking with her halberd twice, but sometimes the second hit would graze one molecule of my unkempt hair, which the only outcome that makes sense to that is that my entire body would physically recoil and I got stunlocked. But if it didn't hit me, then I was able to run around her and make her dizzy so that I could get a couple hits on her. When her anti-air homing missiles showed up, I put full focus into dodging them since my magic resistance was so low that getting hit by a single blade was equivalent to losing an arm. But since I'm basically a Resident Evil protagonist, drinking some juice from my codeine bottle was enough to heal it and make me feel completely better. I was honestly really happy with this fire giant fight, because for basically the entire second phase, I did it with negative 5 health. I felt really good about the fight, and I was excited to finally end it, because at this point, the single attempt was going on for about 10 minutes, and it was going to be this epic underdog story of prevailing over any adversary, no matter how tough it is. 
the fire giant had even less health than I did. And I guess the game could feel how excited I was, because right when I was about to get the final rock throw on him, a random piece of fire from literally out of nowhere blindsided me and turned into a snail or something, because it crawled towards me and gave me a big warm hug against my will and ended my attempt right at the end. I don't even understand why this is a thing. I don't understand how the fire is able to pull out a Tony Hawk 360 out of nowhere and hunt me down like it has the most advanced tracking system ever created by mankind, but it did, so rest in piss, you won't be missed, I guess. As for the real fire giant fight, after losing at the last moment, I knew exactly how many flasks I needed in order to beat him without running out, which was good because the fight is super long and dragged out, since the incantation does no damage, and fire giant's health pool is bigger than my forehead, so we have no choice but to keep throwing rocks at his ankles until these stupid rocks hurt him enough that he tries to pee on it. Second phase, I have to wait until he slams me so I can hurry and attack his hands that land behind me. But most of the fight is waiting for him to do jazz hands in the snow, and every once in a while he tries to give me the people's elbow, but completely misses and pays the price of a broken shoulder. As long as I play very carefully and run away every single time I see fire, like I'm a burn victim, that there's not too much to worry about. At first, when I tried to beat the godskin duo, I tried to beat one after the other, but every time I beat the rolling one and tried to go for the malnourished one, I couldn't beat him before the other one respawned, and that made me really sad. So instead, I decided that I would not even touch the malnourished one, and I would only attack the rolling one, simply because I think the rolling one is much easier to fight, and his attacks are a lot easier to deal with. Also because when he starts rolling, I can get him stuck and just lay into him throwing rocks and insults the entire time he's stuck on the pillar. It made the fight take a little longer than usual, but it was much nicer than having to deal with a spinning Beyblade of black fire all the time, but as long as I didn't have to see his ugly dance spin moves, I did not mind one bit. But what I did mind is when the malnourished one would throw fireballs out of nowhere and smack me in the face causing me to get cucked, since I can't multitask and watch them both at the same time. When I fought Malekith, I had to stay right out of his range and just close enough that I could hit him with my incantation, but not close enough that he was able to hit me back. Unless he dragged his blade into the ground, which quite honestly is his worst attack he can do, because it's so bad and slow. Plus you can just roll right past it and start goofing him up real quick. I just had to make sure to keep chipping away at his health and going in for the knife roll whenever I got the chance, which happened quite often. Second phase, I kept my distance to make him lonely and try to get close to me, which worked out every single time because he's a sad little dog. But once he got close, I punished him for barking all the time and he just kept coming back for attention. Which, it was quite sad, but because he ripped off his clothes like he was coming out of a cocoon, I had to put him down. Every time I fight Gideon with a ranged weapon and not a melee weapon, he turns into one of the hardest bosses because he just keeps dodging every single time I attack him. And these rocks are no different, especially because I have to get right up next to him in order to hit him, since he is most definitely not thick and therefore most of my rocks will miss unless I barrel stuff him. Eventually after many attempts, I learned that if I do a sprinting attack towards him, he kind of panics and forgets that he's able to dodge at all. Whenever he used his counter attack self destruct spell, I had to watch how many times I hit him, otherwise he would just sprint towards me in kamikaze and I would instantly die. As long as I was able to hit him before he got an attack out, I could usually disrupt him and stop him from attacking, which was pretty Super Mario 64 of him. Eventually I best him in the dodging Olympics, and breathe a sigh of relief from him spamming his yellow frisbees of death. Hoagie Bun Supreme is essentially the same as Godfrey, in fact it's exactly the same, so I was able to dodge most of his attacks with relative ease. So I speed ran his first phase and made it to his second phase. The second phase was a little bit spookier, it made me shrivel up quite a bit, but it wasn't too bad. I just waited for him to try to grab me and countered with a couple attacks, which were much more effective on his bare skin. And towards the end of the fight, I got smashed multiple times with no healing and was forced to play defensively for the rest of the fight. Because if he even stomped the ground once and I wasn't prepared for it, it would have been the end of me. Once I had super low health, I didn't take any chances of getting hit and waited specifically for a grab attack just in case he decided to quickly pimp slap me out of nowhere. What the fuck going on in Miami, bro? Boy, she got in no, shit, this shit just disappeared. During the Moog fight, everything was going well until my inner Super Mario 64 speedrun brain came out, and I somehow did a backwards long jump, also known as a BLJ. I seriously have no idea how I did this, because I was trying to run away, but I guess I moved so fast that I backwards long jumped right into a spit and died instantly. I had a nice rhythm for Moog since most of his attack streams are composed of three attacks and then he just stops, except when it doesn't, and he decides to break the pattern and ruin the entire fight. 
I fought him quite a bit because of this, so much that I memorized every single detail on his body, every single pixel, and every single little minuscule detail on him. I also had to get the physical damage reduction talisman. I got tired of dying after two hits by him every single time I made a mistake, and I make more mistakes than my birth. I was able to get a stun on him during the first phase every single time, which would usually let me go right to the second phase and start getting rolled and smoked there instead of the first phase. Once I hit the second phase, I exclusively waited for him to either do his space jam slam attack or a normal slam attack since they are for the most part easily dodged. After every single one of his attacks, I could get two hits safely, but some of the time frames allowed for three, however I could never tell when those times were, so I just stuck to two. I forgot to fight the Lord of Dragons, so here I am now, and this was terrible because his physical damage resistance is pretty high, mixed in with the rocks having no range and already doing low damage so it was probably worse than the time I stubbed my toe on my dog. The only good thing is that his poise is fairly low, so I can get a couple stuns on him assuming that he stays on the ground long enough for me to achieve that. The biggest thing I had to worry about is since he's so big, I can't see half my screen, so I never know when he's preparing to flip around and brush his hand across my cheek gently, which meant there was quite a few times when I didn't expect it at all and I get all flustered by that kind of thing. I also wanted him to do his fire attack where he stands on his hind legs like a circus animal, since he can't do anything during it and I can just feed him tons of peanuts. He did fly away quite a bit and eventually I had no healing like always, so I had to watch everything he did in case he threw a curveball out of nowhere. I got lucky at the end that he decided to do his fire attack again, so I was able to hurry up and beat him before any unforeseen problems appeared like him deciding to fly away. Now I refused to go fight Serpent and Rykard because that would be a nightmare. I also went and fought Melania. And I forgot that she attacks after the cutscene when you first enter the arena, so she insta-killed me and I just was too embarrassed to go back. As for Radagon, it was actually fun to roll over his toes after all of his attacks and to roll behind him and just pelt him in the back of the head with rocks until he got stunned. At this point I have Radagon's fight down to an art form, a very abstract Jackson Pollock art form. I know all of his attacks and openings, yet I still manage to mess it up and I get bonked, conked, and knocked into next week. Luckily he did a lot of attacks that left him open for longer than usual, which was nice of him. I would love to shake his hand since he basically handed me the win multiple times. As for the Elden Beast, I had a pretty good strategy of bursting his fat stomach with rocks before he even realizes I'm in the arena. And then I just had to chase him down constantly until he decided to use a melee attack on me because I could easily dodge them and hit them right after. It really wasn't too bad at all fighting Elden Beast, mostly because he just spammed his melee attacks for most of the fight. And any time he got distance was when he was going to do one of his scripted peach ring attacks. I tried to stun him before he could get out of his super fun party trick that chases you down for a year, but I ran out of magic and had to drink a Capri Sun which sucked because all I had was cherry flavor, but it is what it is. Luckily though, he didn't do anything while I was being chased, so I was just able to run away. But eventually Elden Beast just sat there and let me rock him, sock him, robot him until I finally beat Elden Ring with only Bestial Sling. Except for Melania and Rykard, but we don't need to talk about that. So yeah, anyways.